the lake that flew away. Do you suppose a lake has no feelings, no sense of pride, no self-esteem? Do you think it can lie unattended without suffering? Its weeds run riot like unkempt hair, its fishes choke beneath the autumn leaves, its banks crumble under the feet of drinking cattle. Lake Eme in Estonia is a vast tract of water, a hundred fathoms deep. In the beginning, trees which seeded themselves around it drank its water and flourished, dense and leafy. A forest grew, so did the darkness within it, and soon within the darkness of trees lurked a darkness of men. Brigands and bandits made their lairs in the black entanglement of lakeside trees. They fished the lake for their supper, and they spent long hours sprawled in drifting boats, dangling grappling hooks into the deeps. For it was rumoured the lake held great treasures from an earlier civilization. The men did not dredge the shallows, or clear the weed, or cut back the nettles that mustered at the waterside. That would have been hard work, and they had forsworn hard work. So why did their pockets jingle with gold and their gambling last all night? Because each time a traveller passed through the wood, a pilgrim or a merchant, they cut his throat and threw his body in the deep dark waters. The blood-stained Lake Eam, the blood-shamed Lake Eam, red blood stained the bankside flowers and dripped from the bending grasses onto the face of the lake. The blood soured and fouled the still waters of the lake till it shivered even on a windless day. In horror and disgust, the lake seethed, and bubbles of marsh gas rose from the rotting weed on its bed. I will not be stained with the sin of these wicked men. I shall leave this place. The robber chief, stirring in his sleep, heard the slap-slap of water on the lake shore. He heard a suck-shuck, as of mud parting company from a boot or a boat. Drops of water fell on the roof, and he thought, rain and turned over to sleep again. Suddenly, hands were pulling at the covers and voices shouting in his ear, Come quick! Come quick! The lake is... well, it's... the lake, it's... The lake is what? demanded the robber chief, grabbing a bandit by the throat. What is the lake doing that you wake me up in the middle of the night? Flying away, chief. Like a carpet, chief. Up and away, chief, all silver and glittering. The robber chief rolled out of bed and, and stumbled to the window. Overhead in the sky hung a billion gallons of water, shining like a metal plate, thick as cumulus clouds, spreading out to all points of the compass, a translucent ceiling. If it were to fall, the bandits stood stock still, waiting for a billion steely gallons to fall on their heads like the end of the world. Minute after minute, they listened to the gentle hiss of moving water cascading through the sky. Then the moon bobbed into view again, like a fishing float, and the danger was past. Well, what are you waiting for? bellowed the robber chief. Get out there and make the most of it. There'll be fish by the barrel load too, there for the picking up, and treasure. Don't forget the treasure. All there just for the taking. As they pelted down to the lake, dawn was just rising. The boats have gone, chief. Who needs them? We can walk. They plunged on up to their knees in mud. The lake bed was certainly alive with wriggling movement, and treasure chests lay about, smashed open at the hinges and steaming in the early sun. A bandit thrust his arm into one of the chests, then drew it out with a shriek. The chest was full of frogs. Another was full of water snakes. Another lizards. Not a fish, not a single bearded barbell or dappled trout lay stranded by the lake's departure. But every lizard, reptile, newt, salamander, frog and slug that had ever lived in the mud of the lake was crawling towards the shore. The brigands shrank back in revulsion, only to see the nasty livestock of the lake crawl past into their dens, into their beds, into their boots and bags and hats. They burned everything, their lairs and all they had stolen. They raised the forest to its stumps, then trudged away, their wicked lives in ashes, leaving an empty crater encircled by fire. Meanwhile, 
Lake Eam carried its careful burden of fish and treasure through the sky. It flew so high that people below looked up and said, What cloud is that hiding the sun? Hunters looked up and said, What flock of birds is that blacking out the sun? Then the lake came to a land, parched and cracked, brown and destitute for want of water. The poor peasants there held out their hands, hoping the cloud might spare them a few drops of meagre rain. And suddenly out of the sky it swooped, a sluicing wealth of water which seemed to glitter with jewels. Make me a bed to lie in, and I shall stay with you, offered Lakeem in a voice like a thundering waterfall. The peasants snatched up their hoes and spades, the children dug with their hands, the women wheeled away the dry earth in barrows. Within a week they made a bed for the lake, and Eam settled into it, with a sound like a weary groan. Fish danced on their tails on the surface, while each circular ripple that spread from the centre to the shore washed up a trinket of gold or a few silver coins. Several little boats bobbed about too on the choppy waves. First, the peasants thanked God with prayers in the church. Then they thanked the lake with flowers that they floated on its face. They planted willow trees and dug cattle troughs, made osier beds in the shallows and built jetties from the shore. They channeled water to their fields and the fields flourished. They built a town and fed it on fish and the town flourished. All the fish fry they returned, so that the fish stocks thrived. In short, they cared for the lake, and the lake cared for them, which is as it should be, if you don't want your bed full of newts. <laughs>